Hey everybody, this video is for Americans and foreigners who are going to do the La Ruta de Conquistadores mountain bike stage race in Costa Rica. As um, I just finished it a couple of days ago, I'm in the I'm in the airport lounge on my way back home, and. I won the master's category, age 40 to 49, it was my first time to do the La Ruta, but I ride a lot in Costa Rica because my wife's Costa Rican. So I want to share with you my advice and experience to help you have your best race possible. One of the things that you should do coming into Costa Rica as a foreigner is um, try to drink bottled water um, I've been coming to Costa Rica weeks and weeks per year for the last four years and still every time I go I have like a day or two of diarrhea and you don't want to have to deal with that going into a race that big so trying to just avoid tap water altogether um, in terms of the, the race, this year was the first year it went from the Caribbean side to the Pacific side. Normally it goes from the Pacific side to the, to the Caribbean side. So the first stage this year was flat and fast, and normally that's the last stage. So they're probably going to continue to run it from, from east to west. Nonetheless, whether they do it this way or the, in reverse, my advice will remain the same. It just depends on which way they run it. So for the first flat stage, it was like two hours, basically no climbing. What makes it difficult is, um, well, first of all, if you're coming and you're wanting to get a good result, you need to be prepared to try to make the break with the elite pro field on this first day because that's going to get you a big advantage. I made the break with the, it was a 14 man pro field. Um, and I made the break with them and I was with them for at least the first hour. And one of the critical parts of me making the break was running 36 tooth chain ring up front. And I knew that this, the pace would be very high on that stage. So I, I ran a 36 on the first day. On the second day, I ran a 34. And on the third day, I ran a 32. And that was absolutely perfect. I had a 50 in the rear. And um, I would highly recommend everybody do the same. So anyway, <clears throat> you need to do everything in your power to make sure you're up front, you're in the top 15 wheels, and you make that split because it's gonna split really fast. As soon as they stop the neutralization of the of the start, the pros are going to attack and string it out like crazy. It's going to be 25, 30 miles an hour for a little while, and you got to be you got to have the speed and the fitness to make that. Then I didn't didn't stick it with them because um, I just wasn't in good enough shape to to stick it the whole way. That stage has a lot of uh, gravel roads and the whole race has a lot of gravel roads and you're going to want to run a super fast rolling cross country tire with a low um a low profile uh tread pattern that has a very low rolling resistance um the whole three day stage race has very little single track um i would say 80% of the three days is either paved or gravel roads, it, but the gravel roads are pretty dang rough. And that was sort of a mistake I made on the first day. I ran pretty high pressure. I was running Continental Race Kings all weekend, super fast rolling. Um, but that first day, I ran them a little bit too high on pressure because we, we, after about an hour of running on pavement and gravel roads, 
we switched into this farm and it was a double track, but with super big rocks, like true baby heads everywhere. And that's where I got split off from the pro field and they were just smashing th through there. They really attacked in that section to try and um, make their own uh, splits. And I wish I had lower pressure at that point. I was running like 30 PSI. I normally at home in USA and single track technical stuff, I run like, like no more than 20, probably like 17, 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there. But in Costa Rica, you don't, you don't really need to run that low because you're not running over like, um, you're just not running technical single track. You don't need that on gravel roads and especially pavement. But nonetheless, I wish I had been running 25 for the race kings who were like 2.25s, I'm pretty sure. And actually in hindsight, I would not have run the race kings again. I would have run something that corners with more traction. The race kings have really crappy uh, cornering traction, but they roll like crazy. But all in all, it was, was, was a decent tire. I don't have any big complaints. So that was like the first day. The first day's really uh, pretty humid and hot. This race was in the end of November and early December, which is Costa Rica's really the best time of weather that Costa Rica has. Very little rain and it's not so hot. Um, but other times of year, it's even hotter. I recommend that you uh, electrolyte load for this race because um, Coming from other countries, you get hit you get hit with some different weather in Costa Rica that you may not be prepared for, and you need to have your electrolytes topped off. Um, another piece of advice is you need to have your sleep topped off. You need a sleep load, you need a carb load, and electrolyte load. Uh, you need to sleep load because you have some, um, every day you have a transfer. The transfers are short. You know, you're talking like an hour, an hour and a half drive uh, max. But second day, you have a 7 a.m. start, and third day, you have a 5, 15 a.m. start. So during the race, you really get uh, short change on your sleep. So if you come in with a sleep, with a sleep uh, load, then you can afford to run the debt during the event and not be affected by it too much. Um, so anyway, the first day's flat fast and short and you need to be prepared mentally for just two hours of all-out intensity as hard as you can run it and um, you know pedaling constantly there's no time for any rest and you don't really need to, to utilize a feed zone or anything on the first day I ran a camelback in a one liter bottle and went through both of them and stacked well this is kind of con contradictory but I did um, cramp up with about 30 minutes to go. I think that was more due to the intensity than the heat and humidity. Um, but still, I didn't need a. I didn't really need a feed. I was running a two-liter Usway uh, bladder and a one-liter bottle. Uh, another thing, I tried to run aero bars on the first day because I figured if I got caught out alone and I was on some of those gravel and paved sections, I could make up a lot of time that way. And I got two emails from LaRuta saying that it was permissible. Then when I was doing my warm up and the local cycling federation saw my aero bars, they told me to take them off. And I'm kind of glad I did, I didn't need them. Um, I ended, when I got split off from the pro group, I was in the second group and we worked together really well until we kind of got splintered with about 20 minutes to go. And the, the trail was so, the little farm road was so rough, I couldn't have used them anyway. Um, so it was actually rougher, that first day was rougher than I thought it was gonna be because I'm really used to mountain biking in Costa Rica and it's mainly just rough dirt roads, um, not these crazy rocks that were littered throughout the banana farm. Um, then we did a uh, transfer to Turri Alba, and the second stage is the day I ran my 34. So yeah, the second day, starting Turri Alba, 
and you climb for like my recon I climbed it took me like three and a half hours during the race the first climb took me I don't know it was like definitely two and a half hours maybe around three um and the pros probably did it 30 40 minutes faster than me um I but just be prepared for climbing for three hours I mean unless you're a pro rider you're gonna climb for three hours and you need to be mentally prepared for that like I finished the first stage with a seven minute advantage over the second place rider because he didn't make the break with the, with the pros. And that's what allowed me to put my time in on him. But like, I know what power I can sustain for three hours. And when the race started after the neutralization, it was like balls out, crazy. Like definitely 400 watts just starting out. And I mean, you know, you, you got like a 20 something mile climb and you're doing 400 watts. Like what's the point in that? So I just let everybody ride away from me. So be prepared. Like if you're trying to get a good result, you know, you need to be mentally strong enough to say, I can't do that. And I don't think they're going to be able to do it either. So I'm just going to run my own pace and see what happens. And that's exactly what I did. So the thing about Terry Alba, stage is you run up to like 10 you, the it peaks out at 10,000 feet so you may start and it's 70 80 degrees but at the top it's going to be in the 50s and if it's raining it can rain up there quite frequently and um, you need to try and have like a aid support you know um, this is one thing like at the pre-race registration, I asked somebody that was working the race, do you allow outside assistance at the at the feed zones? And they're like, no, we don't allow that. And I'm thinking, how, how the hell are you gonna control that? I don't believe that. And um, my father-in-law was feeding me in the feed zones and feed zones were littered with people doing feeds, obviously. I mean, that's what I expect. So um, if they tell you that they don't allow it, they do and it's just, I don't know why they would say that. Um, so yeah, you wanna try and have somebody in every single feed zone on that second day, cause it's so long. And have them have a jacket and a vest at, there's a feed zone at called La Pastora. You could have, you know, they, they're gonna have it on them. You're probably not gonna need it there. But after that, they can start getting colder towards the top and there's another feed zone at the top, and if they had it there, it could be nice, especially for the descent. So once you peak out at 10,000 feet, you've got probably like um, maybe 30 minutes descending or so before your next climb, so you can use the vest or jacket and then ditch it somehow or put it in your put it in your pocket. Wouldn't want to ditch it, probably. But after that uh, first descent off of uh, the 10,000 feet. You do have a couple more st stiff, short climbs, like two miles at like 15%. So it's gonna be super taxing day. And um, what else? Oh, I would recommend you bring earplugs, like obviously to every race you do, but to this one, just cause the sleep's so important and you're in, um, you know, you got some people partying next door and you can't get to sleep, so. The, I got some super good earplugs I use if you want to hit me up that you can't hear anything and um, they're not the foam ones they're like rubber ones and they block everything the whole almost the whole entire climb is on a paved road um, a chunky paved road for a lot of it. it's really blown out at, at points but first parts gravel steep but um not big chunky gravel it's okay and um then the descent a lot of the descent is on a paved smooth road and then you can watch my recon video to to see more about it stage three was from uh santa Ana to to uh the beach and this is the stage that starts so early at 5 15 and I mean, try and focus and, you know, 
go to bed at seven, do, do, do whatever you can to get, you know, go to sleep at eight or whatnot. I took some use in HD, made me fall asleep faster. Okay, here's a really strong piece of advice for stage three. Stage one and two, I was running the S-Works Recon SL shoe, which is more of like a gravel race, cross country race shoe. It doesn't really have much of a tread pattern to it. The shoe has a lot of exposed carbon on it. <clears throat> and on the third stage, you have to go through this part called Carrara Park. And it's the most gnarly mud rut, crazy 50% incline hike a bike, one hour suffering that you've ever done in your life. And those shoes were brutal for that stage. <clears throat> I strongly recommend you run a shoe that allows for the toe spikes and you run the toe spikes. Like most people never need those toe spikes, but I wish I had those spikes that day. That would have been like a big time game changer to have the spikes. Um, I did drop the pressure five PSI for that stage and I ran the 32 two chain ring and I'm super glad I did both of those changes. That made a big difference. Um, this is prior, this is one of the, this was the hottest day and the longest day. This was a six and a half hour effort for me, 11,000 and a half feet of climbing. Stage two is 10,000 feet of climbing and a four hour effort. So, you know, I went all out and raced as hard as I could the first two days. And that's what you got to do to, to win or get a good result. And, th and the third day was by far the hardest, came in the most fatigue and just had to grit and bear through it. So you start out neutralized and then when they unneutralize it, it's like a couple of Ks of these little short punchy rollers on a paved road. And you know, the pros are just going balls out, 500 watts, it's all strung out and super fast. And I made that little split, but then I got split off after we started descending down a gravel road and it's like a 10 or 15 minute descent down this gravel road probably 10 minutes and i got blo broke off from the uh, pro field because i blame those cross kings i was happy with the cross kings first two stages but not not during that crazy uh, gravel descending they're so sketchy in the corners i couldn't maintain um that pro field in those corners. So in hindsight, I would have run still a low profile, fast cross country tire, but that had a better cornering um, performance to it. Well, let's see what else. Um, I mean, there's just so much insane climbing on the third day. It's so steep. The second stage is not, it's not steep. It's just forever, the long grind. But the third day is like these short, maybe like five, 10 minute climbs that just un, they're just unrelenting just over and over again. And they're so steep. And then um, I recommend you load the GPX files on every stage because like, yeah, they have it marked and yeah, they have turn marshals, but they're not always the best. And when I was in that Carrara Park, I did make a wrong turn. And I mean, it only cost me like 30 seconds. I figured it out pretty fast. But <clears throat> if um, if I didn't have the GPX loaded, I wouldn't have known. And I would have wasted more time. Cause like I could see, I was starting to get off that uh, GPX line. <sighs> the third day, oh, the third day is the most crucial day for the feed zones because it's so hot and so long. And um, the last feed is probably like 30, 45 minutes from the finish, 30 minutes from the finish. And I didn't take it and I suffered for it big time. Like cause it was getting super hot and it was close to the beach. And um, I mean, I was six hours in at that point and it was just awful. So, you know, I would bring, I would do two Uzway packs, just buy two of them, have them 
fully loaded and ready and interchange them out when you need it at the feed zone. <clears throat> um, a um, few more things like top three pro guys were all riding hardtails. Um, I'm on the heavier side, like 165 to 172 pounds. I don't ride a hardtail. I don't know if I, I don't know how it would go if I did. Uh, I was running a Scott Spark, the older version, and um, but it's definitely a, a, a stage race you can run a hardtail on for sure. And another thing is the sunscreen, like the sun in Costa Rica, you're closer to the equator. It may, in places that you don't feel like it's hot, the sun intensity in Costa Rica is different than the United States. Like you can get fried super fast. So smash the sunscreen before the stages each day. Don't forget to, to um, put that on. So yeah, I mean, overall, it was a really well run event and it was one of the hardest events I've ever done in my life. Like it was, it's just brutal, but that has to do with the terrain and the climates and, and the different microclimates that you experience in Costa Rica. Just training in Costa Rica is brutal. Like there's no way to ride in Costa Rica and not be brutal. It's just a freaking brutal place to ride a bike, but it's super fun. and. And I would like to do La Ruta again. So I hope this helps anybody who wants to come from overseas. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up about it. See ya.